Today to our thesis advisor, Mrs. Darlene C. Tiongson, and to our panelists, my name is Danica Fessi Garcia, and I'm going to present to you our proposed study entitled Employee Benefits and Financial Priorities of Manikis, Technofarms, and Agricultural Supplies During a Pandemic. This is together with my groupmates, Sarah Joy A. Cidro, Zarina N. Haravata, Louie A. Mendoza Jr., and Grace Marie E. Tadeo. So, for the rationale of this study, here is Miss Grace E. Tadeo. I am Grace Marie E. Tadeo, and I am going to give you a brief background on our study. According to Don Tu and Gustafon 2020, COVID-19 has a big effect on economies all over the world. This has far-reaching implications for both the economy and the population resulting in significant shifts on how micro, small, and medium enterprises and customers act. Last March 2020, the Philippine government has implemented an enhanced community quarantine in the whole island of Luzon to control and limit the growth of COVID-19. As stated by the Vera 2020, as a result of the closing of thousands of businesses, more than 4.5 million Filipino employees have lost their jobs in the year 2020. Cabuenas 2020 and Consuelo 2020 said that to lessen the effect of the pandemic, the Philippine government and other agencies created programs to help and support affected employees and businesses. Like for example, the COVID Adjustment Measure Program, Tulong Panghanap Buhay sa Ating Displaced or Disadvantaged Workers Program, and the Small Business Wage Subsidy. Based on the survey of PricewaterhouseCoopers 2020, most employees admitted that economic matters are a notable source of their stress. With the rapid increase of COVID-19 cases, Families modify their usual expenditures into what is primarily needed. After ECQ was placed on Nueva Vizcaya last March 2020, Maniki's Techno Farms and Agricultural Supplies still remain operational up until now. This study is relevant in this time of pandemic for employees in particular to help them be knowledgeable about the benefits they are entitled to either monetary and or non-monetary and to give assistance about managing their finances according to their priorities. For the conceptual and analytical framework, here is Ms. Sarah Joy Cidro. Conceptual and analytical framework. The COVID-19 pandemic has crumbled the methods of doing business that resulted in socioeconomic crisis. In this sense, Many employees suffered and lost jobs, leaving a lot of people with minimal to no income for almost two to three months, in turn squeezing their savings for their daily needs. For those who are lucky enough to remain employed, compensations became a life-saving tool. During this time of pandemic, organizations and employees have been forced to transform their operational routines virtually overnight, thus changing the environment of their workplace. That is according to Vandermeer et al. 2017, Van Zunen, and Vandermeer 2015. Also, according to the Labor Advisory No. 9 series of 2020, or other known as the COVID-19 FlexiWork Advisory, it suggests and encourages the adaptation of flexible work arrangements for the prevention of the widespread infection of the virus, thus reducing the workload and their work hours having rotating shift arrangements or other arrangements in order to reduce the blow of employees, thus losing their necessary income, Navarro et al. 2020. Moreover, it is shown from the result of the 2020 survey done by the Philippine Business Coalition for Women Empowerment and Investing in Women, majority of jobs were suspended. Their working hours and salaries had been cut, or they had been compelled to accept leave without pay. Only 37% of the workers could claim that COVID-19 had no effect on their work. Another point of interest would be monetary and non-monetary benefits of the employees received during the COVID-19 pandemic, be they in stimulus packages or compensation packages, Kavanaugh and Tai 2020, ranging from loans for minimum wage employees, summer 2020, wage subsidies and tax deferment, Wood 2020, 
or cash payments during unemployment, Canadian Press 2020. Furthermore, according to Baker et al. 2020, with the effect of COVID-19 in society, families have been forced to modify their usual expenditures, focusing only to what are primarily needed. The socioeconomic status of employees is also important, for it suggests the spending capacity of the respondents. The paradigm of study will be discussed to us by Mr. Louis Mendoza. As we move on, here is the paradigm of the study that shows the process that will be conducted in order to meet the purpose of this study. The first box represents the variables to be collected, in which the first would be the demographics of our respondents. Second is the contract of service that the employees had. Third is the monetary and non-monetary benefits they have received. And lastly, the financial priorities of Technofarm employees. It will be collected through a guided online interview in order to assess the socioeconomic impact of the current pandemic to the said employees. The researchers will also conduct a document scanning where there will be a part of the questionnaire that will be answered by both the employees and the employer or the manager of Technofarms. This is to prevent bias and to promote reliability. In order to seek convergence and corroboration, the qualitative researchers usually use at least two resources through using different data sources, the purpose of which is to provide confluence of evidence that breeds credibility. Thus, the result of this study aimed to help the employees in managing their finances based on their priorities, and it may also serve as a recommendation to both private businesses and the Philippine government in giving assistance and compensation packages in order to make employees' well-being a top priority in this time of pandemic. And may we move on to the next part, which will be presented by Danica Garcia. Let's now proceed to the statement of the problem. Since a lot of employees are being greatly affected by the pandemic, this study is relevant and timely for them to be knowledgeable to the benefits they are entitled to, either monetary and non-monetary and to give assistance about managing their finances according to their priorities. The purpose of this study is for both the businesses and the employees to know what, they are necessary what are the necessary benefits they should give or receive during a pandemic. The problem is stated to have a clear and concise representation of the issue that is needed to be addressed. This study then seeks to answer the following questions. One. What are the monetary and non-monetary benefits given to employees during a pandemic? Two, what are the benefits that the employees are lobbying to receive during a pandemic? Three, what are the financial priorities of the employees during this pandemic? Four, how do the employees sustain their families' needs during this pandemic? And lastly, how often do the business give out assistance such as stimulus packages or compensation packages during this pandemic. Let's now proceed to the definition of terms, which will be discussed by Ms. Sarina N. Harabata. Thank you, Danica. Again, I'm Sarina Harabata. And in relation to the concept of the study, these are the terms that are operationally defined. First is the monetary benefits, as the name suggests, has something to do with monetary value, which is being given to an employee in recognition for performing exceptionally well. These monetary benefits may take several forms, such as first, the stimulus packages or compensation packages. It refers to the assistance being given to employees working during the pandemic period. Next is the hazard pay, a bonus for employees working under dangerous conditions. Lastly are bonuses, which is something given to employees who perform well despite the pandemic. On the other hand, Non-monetary benefits does not take the form of cash, but this doesn't mean an employee cannot discern its monetary value, some of which are grocery supplies, a benefit from the business which include essential food and non-food items. Another one is protective supply, which is being given to the employees in compliance to the new normal standards, which may include face mask, face shield, and alcohol bottle. Another term is the contract of service, the agreement between the employer and the employee. It is the engagement of an individual to the service. It may also include the validity of the contract and the work designation of the employee. Lastly, 
Financial priority is how the employees manage their finances during the pandemic time in terms of priorities. So these are the terms that are used in the study. Next up is Sarah, who will discuss the first part of the methodology. For methodology, the following methods and procedures will be utilized in collecting and analyzing the data. We, the researchers, plan to conduct a qualitative research that intends to use a descriptive design in order to gather information that will be useful for the purpose of this study. It will be conducted in Maniki's techno farms and agricultural supplies, or simply called techno farms. It is located in Bambang, Nueva Vizcaya, one of the municipalities that is gravely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, in order to identify the participants of this study, the researchers will use a systematic random sampling technique with an intended number of 30 to 40 employer respondents of techno farms. Ms. Sarina Haravata will discuss to us the remaining methods of this study. In the conduct of the study, the researchers intend to use interview sessions and questionnaires as instruments of the study. Given the current circumstances, it will be done through online media, such as, but not limited, to Messenger and Google Meet, whichever is more convenient for the respondents, to make sure that both the researchers and the respondents would be compliant to the health and safety protocols mandated. The researchers shall formulate a questionnaire that shall best respond to the goals of this study. While the questions will be in English, the researchers will also provide Ilocano and Filipino translations for better understanding. As for the treatment of data, the questions shall be formulated vis-a-vis -vis the problems of the study, subject to the scrutiny and recommendation of the research instructor, advisor, panel, and the data analyst. The manner of interpreting and analyzing the data to be gathered shall eventually be determined by the designated university data analyst. Moving on to the data gathering procedure, to properly conduct the data gathering, the researcher's first step is to seek the consent of the business and the respondents to honor the tenets of research ethics, particularly on data privacy or the waiving thereof. After receiving the consent of the respondents, they will be briefed of what the study is about and schedule the interview. The interview session will be recorded by a mobile phone. One researcher will be in charge of taking notes and another researcher will be taking photos for documentation purposes. The researchers will also conduct document scanning or document analysis in the form of questionnaire and interview session with the employer to prevent bias and misleading responses and also for credibility purposes.